Hi you folks, how are we all doing today? My name's Luke, welcome back to Redford Creations and welcome back to my workshop. So today we're talking about the staple of the blacksmithing workshop which is the hammer. This is another instalment in getting started in blacksmithing so as you'll see whenever you see a blacksmith's workshop they have a lot of hammers. I don't know any blacksmith who doesn't have at least 10 hammers shall we say. However when getting started you need to know which ones are best for you which ones are, are the best ones to buy with a limited budget etc i know this because this is the problems i had when i got started so today we're going to go through which ones are the best to buy when getting started how much they cost what different hammers are what they do while you're forging and all that good stuff so if you like this video please 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 remember to subscribe to this channel Put a like on the video and put a like and a comment on the video uh, it helps us out tremendously guys okay guys so let's get started all right then all right then all right then folks so when most people think of a hammer they think of something like this this is a little claw hammer which is fantastic for tapping in and pulling out nails however it's pretty much useless for anything else this is because in blacksmithing the claw on the back has nearly no uh, no use whatsoever and the face the face is what we call the, the part of the, the hammer you strike with the face is quite small uh, will be difficult to uh, to forge with if you had to in a pinch it, you could use it if you had absolutely nothing else but there's plenty of uh, cheap alternatives out there um, another mistake people make when they start getting started with hammers is buying little lump hammers like this this is the same mistake I made so this is better I suppose because it has a much bigger face on it however um, for two reasons it's uh, it's not the best for forging with so it's quite heavy for such a little hammer um, and it's just going to get more and more exerted the more you swing in it and the second is the size of the handle so this little handle here will make forging harder so if you take my cross P in here you can see the difference in the side there's a full you know hand width difference in the thing so with this one I can write down low use that let the hammer do the work the weight of the hammer do the work whereas with this you're going to be using your arm far more just to get it to move again in a pinch you absolutely could but try and go for longer handled hammers uh, cross pins that aren't as heavy so, talking about cross beans, this is my cross bean hammer. This is the hammer you see me forging with all the time because I love it. I got this from a car boot, as stated before, for about two pounds. Uh, still in its wrapper. It wasn't about two pounds, it was exactly two pounds. Um, it is a, a two pound cross bean hammer. And I love it. Perfect hammer for me. Nice long wooden handle. So wooden handles versus synthetic rubber handles. So these are slightly bit easier to hold on to, and that's what they're designed to do. Um, however, they will give you blisters and stuff a lot quicker than uh, a wooden handle will. Um, I find the wooden handle slightly more durable, and you can always contour a wooden handle to your hands if, if you're finding one like if you look at the side the bottom of that handle see how wide it goes you could always like modify it to your to how you want your handle and stuff like that so i prefer wooden handles don't get as many blisters and stuff so yeah cross peen so what is the cross peen this is the cross peen here so what the cross peen does is when you strike uh your material rather than when you strike with the face it's flattening it's, it's pushing the material out in all directions when you strike with the the cross pin is pushing the material out in two directions away from the pin. So as you strike, it's pushing the material out like this. So it's good for, say, uh, if you're making a chef's knife, you've reached the length you need it to be, but it's not quite as wide. If you keep striking it with the face of your hammer, it's just going to keep getting longer and longer and longer. Whereas if you use a cross pin, it's going to start pushing the material widthways the way you want it to go. So two different types of pins on hammer on hammers so that's a normal cross pin and there you can see the other way it's just peen the other way that's all it is so you saw me use this during the uh 
the ro uh, metal roses we made for the Halloween special. So yeah, you can have them in either direction. Most cross pins on a hammer head will be in that direction. But obviously you just cater the hammer, turn the hammer to the material, rather or the material to the hammer. Um, you don't necessarily need one of these. I just, again, found it at a car boot, thought it was cool. So uh, sticking with cross beans, this is a slightly bigger three pound hammer, uh, synthetic handle again. This is how I know it gives you more blisters. Uh, you can see the difference in a two pound and a three pound. Uh, a lot of people think the bigger hammer is gonna be better. It is, really isn't when you're swinging a hammer for three, four hours maybe. Uh, you'll feel the three pounds over the two pounds a lot, lot more. This is really good if you need to move a lot more material. If you've got thick material, you need to make it thin material, then bigger, heavier hammer will do the work a lot quicker. Next we have a, uh, a ball peen hammer, which is what that's on the other back. It's called a ball peen. Uh, this is a fantastic little hammer to get started with. Again, nice long handle. Um, letting the, let the hammer do the work rather than you doing the work with the hammer. This is, again, two pounds. Nice, big face with rounded edges, really good. And then the ball pin, so what does the ball pin do? So a bit like the cross pin, you strike with the ball pin and it spreads it out in all directions. Now it's a little bit like striking with the face, however on the face you've got quite solid uh, ridges here. Whereas the ball pin is a lot more pronounced, you can see the difference there. So as you hit, it's gonna give you a lot more uh, you know, indentation and then it's going to uh, not mark it on the edges because if you strike with, if you do a miss strike, you hit on the corner, it'll uh, it'll just mark it with the thing. So this is a, a ball pin is really good for pushing the material out in all directions and making a small piece of material a bigger piece of material. But this, in my opinion, if you had to buy one hammer, I would buy something very very similar to this. Again, I brought this from a car boot for a couple of pounds. Uh, fantastic little hammer uh, you can swing it all day because it's not too heavy it's just a, a really good little starter hammer and this is you'll see a lot of blacksmiths using hammers a lot like this so yeah this is what I'd recommend you go out and buy if you can't get to a car boot I know it's coming to winter now Amazon I guarantee you could find one on Amazon for I don't know, 20 pounds or less so uh, yeah if you're getting started and you can only buy one hammer that's what you want so we'll move on to a couple more like speciality type hammers. This is actually a masonry hammer. And I used this when I didn't have a hot cut hardy to, uh, to cut material. So as you can see, it's like a chisel on the end. And all you do is strike it on the material and it's cut, it'll cut straight through your material, a lot of butter. Uh, fantastic little tool, cheap little tool if you wanna do hot cutting. Uh, yeah, really cool little tool before you get in uh, all the big equipment like hardy tools and stuff like that. This is the same sort of thing, however, it's like a little punch. So rather than trying to punch through, you can see it's kind of a bit bent now, but uh, yeah, same exact thing. Striking down, puts a little hole through the material and then you'll widen it out. This is a flatting tool. This looks a little bit like a hammer, but it's never, never to be used like a hammer. You can see the, uh, the steel handle on it. You, you don't swing it like a hammer. You place this on the material and then strike the top a bit like the other two tools. And what it does is it just flattens the material out. If you've got big marks in the material uh, from your hammer strikes, which you will do when you're getting started, you're going to be having miss hits and stuff like that. This will help get those out by just flattening the material all the way around. And then, last but not least, you have the sledgehammer. Now I built this. This is a, I think this is a, a 10 pound head. I brought the head at a, uh, a car boot. Again, you sit here that a lot with my hammers. I think I paid one pound for the head. It was an old rusty thing I found in a monster grass. The guy said, give me a quid for it. Took it home, cleaned it up. Put a short handle on it in my workshop. I can't be swinging big, heavy sledgehammers. I'd have to do that outside. So I put a short handle on it, which is not something you can really go out and buy. Uh, you can't really buy sledgehammers with big heads and small handles. So um, yeah, if I need to move material and I need a helper, I'll get a helper down 
and I swing this and I promise you it definitely moves material uh, nice little leather wrap on it because I felt whimsical well then guys that's uh, pretty much it for hammers those are your basic types of hammers there are a few little few more but there's no need to go into that when you're getting started so just to recap stay away from claw hammers stay away from lump hammers you want nice wooden long handled hammers preferably with a ball pin on the back or a cross pin on the back um, I prefer the cross, my cross pin hammer but obviously all preferences uh, are down to yourself I said I pay probably £5 for the both of these so these things are not expensive a lot of people don't know what they are or what they do and they just think oh look at that cheap little hammer who cares but to you this is your this is your lifeblood this is your uh, this is how you make your business so again don't be uh, enticed too much unless you, if you've got the money then fine but don't be enticed uh, or, or told you have to go out and buy a rounding hammer which is what's technically known as a blacksmith's hammer um, you can pay silly money for them, you can pay 100, 200, 300 pounds for them depending on who you get to make them and stuff like that. Um, but don't feel like you have to go out and buy that stuff by any means. I've been doing this three and a bit years now and I've, I'm still using a two pound hammer I brought from a, uh, from a car boot and I, I do perfectly well at least I think I do. So. Uh, don't be tempted, don't be told that you, you have to run out and spend hundreds of pounds on a specialist hammer, you don't. Alright and guys, I'm going to leave you there. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.